What is the difference between a resume and a CV? And what's the purpose of both of those documents for somebody with an anthropology degree? Firstly, a resume is supposed to be a very short, brief summary of your important qualifications for the position that you are applying for. A CV, on the other hand, is supposed to be a comprehensive collection of all of your qualifications and achievements. Now, a resume is typically what is required for a job in an industry. They often want to see just a summary of the things that make you particularly qualified for the position that you are applying to. A CV is more typical in the academic world. This means that a CV needs to be a living document, a running list of everything that you have done that shows your complete and total record of education and experience in the area of study that you are applying yourself. In your case, it will be anthropology. When you are applying for a job, you almost always need to create a new resume that is specifically tailored for that job. What that means is that you need to read the specifications in the job ad very carefully and then you need to use the document to highlight the specific aspects of your record that are most relevant to that particular position. A resume needs to be a short, very approachable, very readable document. It should be ideally one page, at most two pages front and back if you're handing something in on paper. You need to start a resume in a very different way than you would start a CV. The resume should start with a brief summary of your qualifications and potentially also your career aspirations depending on the position that you're applying for. Then you need to very briefly state your education, particularly we're looking at your post-secondary education, your BA, maybe your AA. After those degrees, you don't need to list your high school qualifications anymore. And then you need to start with career experience. That is very important. If you've had a job that really lines you up uh, for the next job, the one that you're applying for, you need to put that at the top of the resume. And then further down, you can list some of the other qualifications. These could be extracurricular activities you did while in school. This could be particular courses, uh, research projects, internships, etc. And at the very end of a resume, you want to list any other relevant qualifications, particularly language skills or technical skills. And it should, again, be very short, and everything should be well ordered. The dates of all of the experiences, uh, the previous jobs, the courses, etc. should be easy to find and lined up. The idea is that somebody is going to be going through a, a large stack of resumes and they're going to want to look for specific qualifications and you're going to want to make their job as easy as possible. You want to be put in the keep pile and not in the reject pile. That's the job of a resume. A CV, on the other hand, is going to be something you use when applying, for example, to grad school or to continue on in a more academic or research setting. A CV needs to start with your basic information and a reverse chronological order of every single thing that you have done in that academic sphere. That includes your schooling. Again, you only need to go back to your post-secondary education. You don't need to include your high school. And then you need to start with research and education. And eventually, if you have service that you've done for the community, you can add that in there as well. I want to stress that this needs to be a reverse chronological order so that the most recent things need to be at the top of the page. And as you go down through each section, you go from most recent to most distant in the past. The point of this is to have sections showing research, education or teaching, and then service, so that somebody who is evaluating your academic achievements can quickly see how active you've been, 
how long you've been active, and in which areas you've been most active. The CV is an important document for this reason uh, because it is an ongoing and uh, living document that you will continue to update if you continue on in this area in, in a research or academic setting. So every year you need to update the CV and add all the new excellent things that you've done in all the different areas and it gets longer and longer as your career gets longer and longer. And this is again the opposite of the resume which maintains its short one may at most two page status. A resume needs to be continually culled or cultivated. You need to be moving things on and off of it for each individual position and highlighting only those specific aspects of your record that are relevant. The CV is a continual and complete record of everything that you have done. Now, as an anthropologist, you're going to need to have probably both types of documents. If you're looking at an applied area, in particular if you're looking at cultural resources management or some area of industry that uh, anthropological training is desirable for, then you're going to want to create a resume that highlights both your anthropological training and your career readiness for that particular sector. In cultural resources management, they might want to know very, especially for your first job, if you had any previous field experience, and you should put that pretty high at the top of the list. Your high school job at a restaurant or a daycare may not even be relevant in that particular sense, and maybe you shouldn't put it on there, or at least maybe it should go towards the bottom of the page if you don't have anything else that is more relevant. If you've taken particular courses, for example, if you took Anth 531 Methods in Applied Anthropology, that's relevant to those jobs and you're going to want to highlight that that class is on your transcript and talk about specifically the skills that you've learned. On the other hand, if you're applying to grad school, you need to create a CV that highlights your qualifications for moving on to the next phase. If it's an MA program or a PhD program, you need to, to showcase the achievements you've done in your undergraduate uh, section of your education. In particular, if you've done internships or research projects or any other kind of extracurricular work um, presented at the Student Research Symposium, written an article for the Splice Undergraduate Journal, those things are really important and they need to be highlighted uh, in the CV. So. Depending on which way or ways that you're going, you're going to want to focus your efforts more on the resume versus the CV or vice versa, but you're probably going to want to cultivate both types of documents because eventually you may need to make a jump from one area to the other. And it's important to not let the skills creating a CV outshine the skills you've put into polishing and developing a resume.